there is a special uh, set of expectations of police officers. I mean, they, are, they have a special position in American society. They have powers that the rest of us don't, uh, and an expectation that they'll be able to manage situations differently than, than others of us. And so it strikes me that it's not completely unreasonable to, to think that, that the approach to a police officer's behavior is at a much higher standard than simply other acts of, crim other acts of violence that may occur among citizens. But is there any dimension of police behavior that's problematic? Well, Doug, you're absolutely right in the points you make. A, there is a very ugly history in this country of policing and race. The police were the bulwark of our unthinkable betrayal of our nation's founding ideals. They were essential to maintaining slavery, Jim Crow segregation, and there has been a history of violence and brutality. And that history, understandably, takes a long time to get over and it makes police shootings of blacks particularly and understandably fraught. And, and that is a reality that nothing can erase. There's no question about that. And there's, it's also true, as you say, Doug, that we should have a higher expectation for police officers. And uh, the thought of having a loved one shot by a police officer is, is understandably just outrageous. Uh, and there's been some very bad police shootings over the last two years that we've focused on. Uh, the shooting of Walter Scott in North Charleston, the shooting of Laquan McDonald in Chicago. Those were abysmal failures of police tactics. Uh, but I think that the emphasis that's given to them uh, is disproportionate to the problem. And I do think that the Black Lives Matter narrative, which has been accepted by President Obama, and I would say amplified and certainly enabled by the mainstream media, that says that we're living through this epidemic of racially biased police shootings of blacks is simply not true. Uh, a greater percentage of white and Hispanic homicide victims die of, from police shootings than black homicide victims. A, uh, police officers are 18 and a half times more likely to be shot by a black male than an unarmed black male is to be shot by a police officer. So uh, again, while officers need more training, and officers are desperate for more tactical training. I know officers in Chicago who pay for it out of their own pocket. They want help in making those agonizing split-second decisions of shoot, don't shoot. Unfortunately, what is now being promoted by, uh, by our president and, and uh, Hillary Clinton is something known as implicit bias training for officers. This is, as far as I'm concerned, not to mince words, a fraud. Why? Because the evidence shows, four academic studies have shown out, come out this year alone, that show again that everything we think we know about police shootings and race from Black Lives Matter activists is 180 degrees, as you say, Doug, wrong. If there's a bias in police shootings, it actually works in favor of blacks. Now, this is almost impossible to assimilate because it runs so counter to the media narrative. But Lois James at Washington State University, Roland Fryer, a black economist at Harvard University, Ted Miller, an economist in, in Maryland, and the Center for Policing Equity have all shown that whites are more likely to be shot than blacks. Implicit bias training is based on this idea that police officers are walking around with implicit bias against blacks that is resulting in them shooting blacks out of racism. <music>